Good morning comrades, it's currently 7 o'clock 21 in the morning and it's already traffic jam in Nürburgring. Typical Nürburgring things. Hey, why are cars going in the opposite direction? To get on the track. That's a very interesting service. So today there's a driver training by Nürburgring and also Gedlich Racing. Okay, timeline wise it probably doesn't make any sense, but we are, as you can see, already back at Apex. The Cooper is back, it just did its uh, instruction laps or lead and follow laps and I sprayed some window cleaner on it because it came back with lots of bugs on it and now it needs to go to the safety driving center to be rented out again. Pretty busy day, um, very good for business because the track is closed today officially for the track day and well the Nürburgring driving training and some event happening at the safety driving training. So in that regard we're very lucky, very happy. Okay, let's get the bugs off and go to the driving center. So the Cooper has gone to the Nürburgring Drift Park and poor up. Nobody wanted to drive the up. Meh. <sighs> Don't worry. Well, maybe one of you guys wants to drive the up on the Nürburgring Neuschleife for just 110 euros, all inclusive lap ticket and fuel and <sighs> poor up. Don't worry, your friends will be back soon. Yay, the friends are back. Well, all the cars are back in one piece. And I think they're shining more than ever because they even wash them. So a huge shout out to driving uh, center Nürburgring or drift park Nürburgring for taking such a good, good care of the cars. I wish every customer would just come and like, you know, wash a car. I'm sorry for like not keeping my promise of showing you like the track day and the drift park because I was doing some other stuff. But however, don't be discouraged because we have something special. Well, let's go and check it out. You're almost like a dentist. Yeah. Like an electric toothbrush. But before we tell you more about the 720 and its detailing process behind it, first something more well, personal and exciting as well, something that we've been waiting for, in particular Tom, since what, January? Yeah, January. January. Yeah. January. Yeah, November, <laughs> November. Yeah, November. Yeah. Nancy is running again. Nancy, it's uh, the name of uh, his car. So, what have you or actually Tim been doing in the last <laughs> couple of, <laughs> I don't know what days? So, I'll start on the inside. Yeah, that's yeah, good. that's the most awesome bit. So, Tom's got a set of Recaros. Yeah, which is very nice. All of our rental cars are running full position, but those yeah. are SPGs actually. Yeah, correct. And I like the fit of them actually a lot more. Yeah. The harnesses are coming. You already have the cage got, actually. The harnesses and the cage, it's just, uh, yeah, finding the time to, to throw that in. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite an ambitious cage, I don't know if you know, but it's, it's a six point, so yeah. it's got every single cross you could possibly Yeah, they, they actually had to send it like, what, two or three two, different... Two, yeah, two... Two postages. Two post uh, arrivals, yeah. but... So yeah, that's that's going in next, and then the harnesses. Cool. Um, yeah. Any other interior mods, like a shifter or something? No, not yet. Retrim steering wheel. Oh yeah. True, retrim, retrim steering wheel. Yeah. yeah. That'd be nice. You already have some carbon fiber wrap. It, or is it stock? It's factory. It's factory. Yeah. Wow. The dials are getting changed because they're hideous. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tim Olsen broke it. <laughs> How you managed to break the dial? <laughs> Turn left. Drifting. <laughs> uh, hmm. Yeah. The most important part is uh, financed by fund, yeah, huh? Fund, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Keep that quiet because I don't want to put his name like that. Because that's, no. uh, that's our game. <laughs> so that's cool. interior, and yeah. then the exterior still looks the same. Apart from the different wheels, so mm -hmm. 17-inch wheels now. Yeah, so we picked them up from a, a baker's son in uh, some random city in Germany. We went and got them. Okay. The night. So they were in Michelin uh, uh, PS4s. PS4. Yeah. So you can also go out in the rain. Yeah, that's, that's the main thing. That's the reason. Because yeah. obviously I'm coming from it from a complete novice point of view. Yeah, and you can also go back to UK and like drive in the rain yeah, because exactly. it always rains there anyway, right? So, so yeah. That's what used to. Well, what we also see yellow brake pads. Yep, so it's uh, Paget RS29s mm -hmm. in front of the rear. Very commonly used compounds by the track enthusiasts. Yeah, it's like a budget endurance pad. Yeah, that's yeah. oh, good. It's um, good. And then we're running KW dampers mm -hmm. with a H&R lowering spring. Mm -hmm. So it's not like a true coilover setup. It's all like a fast road setup. Because again, yeah. it's Tom's first car for track, so we didn't want to... Yeah, we can see something there. happening there. Um, the H and R KW roll bars. The H and R roll bars. H yeah. roll bars on it as well. So that's going to mm -hmm. help stiffen it up. Ian, mm -hmm. if you're watching, which I know you probably are, that's your brake caliper there. So that's uh, <laughs> it's been re sprayed. So there you go. Thank you for that again. So it's running a 330 brake setup now. Yeah, front and rear 330 brake setup. Re yeah. Reading all the rear trailing arms uh, with Powerflex black bushes and fresh um, mm -hmm. ball joints throughout. 
So yeah. Hmm? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are will be finding it interesting to see how this car progresses and also how Tom gonna progress because yeah. novice driver, um, not like a high gazillion euros budget built car, but exactly what you want to do, do it properly, like upgrade the brakes, the tires, the suspension, but not don't go too crazy. So I'll say it's more about making a car which is actually reliable, mm -hmm. first of all, yeah, exactly. safe, mm -hmm. predictable. So he knows what he's going to get into every time, and something which isn't like too highly strung. Yeah. Because if you throw him into something like my 36 from last year, for example. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not going to end well. No. no. So <laughs> you're going to work up to it. No, exactly. Yeah, and I'm interested to see how people kind of kind of take it because you know, I'm hoping it's going to inspire a lot of people who want to build track cars, so you actually can do it on a budget. Yeah. You know, you can get out there and have fun. So, yeah. Yeah. So That's I'm awesome. Excited. To... Yeah. I don't know, what was it? Corvette, Corvette, probably. Yeah, well, for more questions, give the man a follow on Instagram and message him. And also message Tim, give him also a follow and ask about all the budget build questions. But we will not build your cars, unfortunately. Because we barely have time for our own stuff. As well, you can it's see. taken it's five months to get this well, far. <laughs> the reason why it's, you know, it's now May and I picked this up in well, December. So. Yeah. Yeah, we are busy. But we're getting there. Awesome. So when are you thinking of going first time on the track with this? Who knows? Within the next four weeks, I'd like to think. Yeah. There you go. Within the next month. Cool. Well, actually, this weekend is N24, 24 hours of Nerva Cream. So this is. It's ready for N24. Yeah. That's, that's what I built it for. So. <laughs> and now back to the 720 with Pete, who just done all the polishing work. Um, just a quick background info. We are going to PPF the car. Yes, after almost 6,000 race, well, fast kilometers on the Nerva Cream. So you will see in a bit that the, some parts are already like beyond repair. Uh, but yeah, the car needed to be like uh, taxiing uh, soon because we already had a lot of requests and that's the story. So unfortunately, we'll have to accept that over winter we will have to repaint the car like we did, well, Robert did with the 675 LT. But that's something for later. Now, what have you been doing? So I prepared the, the panels that will get PPF tomorrow. So mainly pretty much the entire front, front bumper, bonnet, both front wings, and then um, the side sills. Mm -hmm. So pretty much this whole panel from top corner to bottom corner and all the way to the back. Mm -hmm. And then also the rear bumper behind the, behind the rear wheels. Those are now fully polished, mm -hmm. ready for paint protection film. Mm -hmm. And then they'll put on the PPF tomorrow. I naturally don't want to be polishing at the same time when they're in installing a paint protection film. You would get a lot of dust underneath the film and that's not a good thing. So I'll go and do something else tomorrow. And then on Wednesday I'll be back here, polish the rest of the panels and then put on coating on top of everything. Also on top of the paint protection film, we'll coat the glasses, everything. And then we'll see if we have time, we'll probably coat the interior as well just to make it a little mm -hmm. bit easier if someone has an accident on the track inside the car. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> actually, yeah, actually, um, two days ago, yeah, two days ago was the first time that someone ever got sick in the car and actually two people on the same day. Luckily, one person said just like to, to slow down on the track and the second one had to actually throw up. I'm sorry if you're like eating and watching my vlog, uh, but it was like after the lap. But yeah, it happens, it happens. Uh, but that's why we have all those barf bags. But um, the, going back to the main topic, you said you had to prepare the car for PPF for polishing. Is this a standard procedure or is it because the car has been already used? Even a brand new car usually has a little bit of scratches. Mm -hmm. I mean, the dealership, of course, they polish it before they give it to the customer, but they're usually not that accurate as we can mm -hmm. be. I mean, they can spend a couple of hours preparing the entire car for the customer and will spend a week on it. Yeah. So yeah. There, there's the difference. I'm pretty sure dealership detailers can also do a proper job if they are given enough time. Yeah. So that's that's the biggest difference. Yeah, this is something that you've done with uh, with the F80, with the M3 taxi as well, that you were polishing it first before it got PPF. Yep. Um, so yeah, apparently there's that. It's not just... In case you're probably wondering why it costs so much to just like put transparent foil, protective film foil on your car, then because apparently you need to polish the car first. Yep. Thank you for the info. Then probably the only thing that it's left to ask, um, how much of a difference is there like of a paint between like 
this car and for example the F80 that you've done before? Mm, I mean of course the color makes a difference. I mean on white it's difficult to see any kind of imperfections but it's also difficult to see if it's perfect. Mm -hmm. So the F80 being uh, more of a darker gray you can see everything a lot easier mm -hmm. but in terms of polishing they were actually surprisingly similar. You also told us that you might polish or like the bottom, the flat bottom of the car. If we have enough time. <laughs> I mean, we have, what, naked metal plates and we have carbon fiber there as well, both lacquered and unlacquered. So, yeah, sure, why not? That's we cool. Have time for it. Extra aerodynamic effect. We will see if it's going to drop the lap times. Not that we know what the car is capable of. We know, but... <laughs> anyway, stay tuned to find out that. Uh, thank you very much, Pete. And thank see you. you next time, next time. When, when you're going to polish something else. Maybe this. Yeah. Sure. Or oh, this, this, yeah, let's do that. Oh, yeah, the bobby cars, we yeah. have to do those. Yeah. Well, Pete is off back home to Saarbrücken, and it's almost the end of today's vlog, but there's this one more thing that I want to show you, which is underneath. In case you watched our comparison between the LT and the 720 last year, you already know what I'm going to show you, but maybe there's going to be something else. So what I want to show you is actually the amazing flat bottom. Those aerodynamic elements, which we cannot find on the LT or actually any other supercar for that matter. Probably some cars, but in this case, this was something very interesting to see when we first put the 720 on the lift for the very first time. Here we can see some scratches from the carousel. Actually, it looks a lot worse on camera than it is in real life because I'm running a flashlight now to show you also some interesting suspension components, which is... Oh, it looks fabulous, it looks interesting. Uh, but what I actually really like the most, and I'm not sure if I showed to you last time, it's actually this. Just a simple piece of plastic, but it adds cooling to your brakes. And some supercars are known for being... Ah, the flashlight turned off because my uh, battery is almost low. Yeah, some supercars are known for being uh, amazingly fast on the straight, but once you put them on a the track, they lack brake cooling. And then after that, it's... yeah done so uh, you need to come up with your own fabrication after paying multiple hundreds of thousands of euros for um, for a car well multiple around 200 but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed today's vlog um, and see you guys tomorrow when i don't know what's going to happen i'm going to russia to visit my dad so maybe there's going to be a russia vlog because a couple of uh, well some of you have uh, asked to do that so who knows we'll see hope you guys enjoyed have a nice day week month and see you hopefully soon at another cream Preferably in this car and, well, any car for that matter. Or just like even come by and say hi. See you. Thank you. Bye. Tonight I have a food chat, something special. Ice cream. We already had proper food at La Lanterna, but I want to also show you this. Kuduria Cameron Glickenhaus Racing Expedition Team. Yep, SCG is ready already here for the N24, 24 hours of Nürburgring. But that's something you will have to wait a bit. But for now, food chat. Mint, cassata and vanilla. Yum. An amazing sunset. Go on, eh? Yeah? yeah, it's going there. I, mean, I could have just bought a trampoline, it would be cheaper. <laughs> I think it's lowered. And what's it showing? 129 uh, micrometers of paint or what? Paint and, uh, well, base coat, color coat, lacquer. Thickness. Bundo underneath. Basically everything between metal uh, and metal, the... metal and uh, surface. Wow. 135. Let's go measure the, the M4. Let's just compare the left door and the right door. So here we get like 104. 119. 175. So it's already like Almost double. Seven, 70 more. 253. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so, extra weight. That's 1.3 millimeters. Okay. So, there's a little bit of bundo here. 560. 0 0.9 millimeters. Wow. 